was popping. That's what's popping. All right, guys, so it's finally happening. Today is going to be the day that we complete our rare hatch glass mod. I have a few things that I need to uh, sort. I had to clean up my workbench, get that mess out of the way. And um, when you get to work here, I'm doing this modification. So now that we have our clean ish working surface, we're going to go ahead and lay out the goods. So here's our actuator. This can be found on Infinity QX4s 1997 through 2004 and on the Nissan 350Z uh, 2003 through 2009. This will be the main part that you will need. I also have my switch. I sourced this pigtail. But um, this connector is not going to fit our switch, so instead what I'm going to do is de-pin this and just use the wires by themselves. You'll see how I accomplish this later. We have some wire. This is going to be 18 gauge, so we'll be using this. Heat shrink tubing. And then where's my buck connectors? We'll need these too. These are ring terminals. We're gonna use these to uh, ground out our connection in the back. Here's our butt connectors. So we're gonna be using that stuff to uh, get this project on the way. Oh, you're also gonna need a 7.5 amp fuse. While I was at this uh, junkyard, I grabbed a handful or a few um, assortments. I got the 7.5, I got 10 amps, a 15, and a 20. Because you never know. And I'd rather get them this way than to pay for them retail. So we had those. Before I forget, you'll also need a fuse tap as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is actually uh, move to the back of the truck. And the reason for this is because we want to go ahead and get the uh, trunk lid paneling off to expose the area that we're going to be working in today. So let's go take a look. What I'm hoping to achieve is that we can both be in this area and work together. You guys get the full visual. I'm sure you'll appreciate that. I believe I'm going to need a 10 millimeter socket. And perhaps a flathead screwdriver. Let me see. Sometimes you get lucky and this actually pops out by hand. Yep, mine's it. Perfect. So we'll get a 10 millimeter uh, socket. All right, so I'm going to be going with a 3 8 ratchet with a 3 8 extension and a 10 millimeter socket. And these shouldn't be these shouldn't be tight at all because because again these are just used to hold the uh, panel in place so once you break them loose you should be able to just simply use your socket to get it off the rest of the way If you have a tonneau cover in the back of your truck, if you're blessed enough to have one, don't ever sit anything on it. It will damage it and it'll never be the same again. So don't ever put anything on it, regardless of how heavy or light you think it is. All right. Usually when I'm at the junkyard, I try and be gentle with this, but you should be able to now just simply pry this down by hand. Like so. And then you're going to want to have your keys handy because now you have to open the actual uh, hatch glass to get the top of that trim off. You just pop that guy open like so. And you gently come up. 
You don't want to go too far. And then just gently lift this guy down. Or let the trunk lid fly up all the way. Close the eye hatch glass. We can let the lid back up. Let's set this guy over here. Okay. I'm going to bring you guys in for a close-up view so you can see because unfortunately you're not going to be able to see much once I start actually working on the area. So if you're sitting in the back of your R50, if you look where the uh, latch is for your hatch glass, you look down, you'll see the um, arm for the wiper motor. And then as you look to the right, you're going to see these two holes here. This is actually where the actuator will be mounted. Now, it's going to be mounted on the back side of this, so you're going to want to slip it in from here. And then, let me see if I can get you guys a good shot here. So, if you can see that white tab right there, and I'm going to point to it. Right there, right where my finger is pointing to. That is where you're going to insert the arm to the actuator. I know it's crazy. Nissan actually had this stuff in the truck already, and for whatever reason, they decided not to give it to us. Um, I know this is available on some LE trims, but even then, the setup is a little bit different from what you would see on the QX4. But as far as the actuator goes and the switch, they're pretty much in interchangeable. So that's where we're going to insert the uh, arm to the actuator, so that way when the actuator actuates, it actually pulls the uh, release lever there and allow the uh, hatch glass to open. And if your struts are working like they should, your hatch glass should actually lift itself. So that way, by the time you get to the back of the truck, depending on what you need to get or put in the back of your truck, it'll be open already, which is always nice. And that's what I'm shooting for. This is where we're at. So initially I was trying to run the wire next to this guy, but I just couldn't get it to go through the hatch because it would have been routed this way coming down to this hole, but that didn't work. So I just put it in between the eye uh, hatch and the uh, weather stripping there. Uh, Don't beat me up too much in the comments, guys. I absolutely had to do things this way. I was trying to do things the right way, but unfortunately, it just didn't pan out. And this wire, it's going to come down and then go into this grommet and then down into the body of the truck. And I'll probably wind up zip tying this so that it's not flopping and going all over the place. Now we're just feeding our wire through. And when you poke these holes, try and take care not to make them bigger than you need to. Um, this rubber material, depending on the age of your truck, you know, it's gonna be one of those things that you don't wanna impact it too much because if you rip this, then you can inadvertently introduce water into your vehicle if you live in a place that rains a lot. I mean, I'm in a desert, but even here it rains too. We got mounds of rain a couple of weeks ago, so much so that my backyard, my entire yard and neighborhood was just uh, flooding right before my eyes. So, just make sure that you take care with this. All right, now we're getting to the fun parts. Now that we have that wire routed through that grommet, it's gonna go into the frame of the truck and it's gonna come down this paneling all the way to the bottom and then towards the front. You're gonna wanna take off the uh, threshold to the uh, trunk space. Take that guy out the way. And then this right here pulls out. Um, however, let's get our cargo net out the way because down here we have a uh, anchor point that needs to be moved. Get 
this is an anchor point for our cargo net, not for, you know, securing stuff. This is the other um, anchor point. But I was talking about the one that holds your cargo net in place. Oh, you know what? A tunnel cover would need to come out too. Okay, now that that's out the way, you're just gonna grab this wherever you can. I prefer to grab it here at the bottom. Just grab this plastic trim and pull. And there you go. Oh, there's a tin right there. So for the bolt that resides in this hole, you're gonna to wanna to use a quarter inch tool to get in here to get at it. Once you break that guy loose, you should be able to just take it out by hand. And that's for the top of our anchor point. And we have to do this so that this panel or trim would move just enough for us. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the top section of the trim back in place. Just gonna go ahead and retighten our anchor here. Again, it doesn't have to be He-Man tight because it's plastic. If you over-torque that thing, it'll distort your plastic and then you'll be kicking yourself. So don't do that. Okay. I'm just gonna toss my wire towards the front of the truck. Again, we haven't actually connected anything, we're just running the wire at this point. What we want to do is figure out where our wire is going to sit. Oh, we have plenty of wire, plenty. All right, so we routed our wire through the uh, door jam here from the back side of the truck. can't see it because I have it tucked but uh, this is the front seat you see the wire right here we're just gonna tuck that guy along with our trailer wire there you go and then it's gonna go all the way up through this uh, kick plate here and then up to our switch location which is gonna be right here and that's where we want to put our switch right there there's a blank here, you just push it out by opening up the uh, tray here. You should be good to go. You also want to take this out because it's going to be in your way later. Once you've made your way to the front, you will then need to remove this plastic trim panel. Now you have the option of using either a Phillips head screwdriver or a 10 millimeter socket. You want to be gentle with this because these things they break real, real easily, like really, really easy. Once that's out of the way, this is what you'll have. And um, essentially what we're gonna do is route this wire up to the fuse panel and um, we'll cut enough just to attach to our uh, adder circuit. Let's see. Yep, and this is gonna come up. So you wanna cut a little bit more than you actually need just to leave room for flex. Yeah, cause this is gonna come up like this and then up into our fuse box. So like this much should do. 
can see we have our uh, fuses inserted into our um, outer circuit. Again, you're going to want to get into the fuse position for your interior lights as there will always be 12 volts present in that particular uh, circuit and that's what you want for this modification. All right, so we're just crimping our uh, positive connection here for the actuator itself. I'm also putting a piece of uh, heat shrink tubing. did we just did was ground out our actuator here all right so we were able to thoroughly test the actuator again it is working so now we're just going to go ahead and cut off the extra zip ties here i got the conduit in the wrong size and I'm already here, so. But this isn't going to hurt anything. And I did try and make it look neat by rounding it with a lot of the factory wiring versus just letting it hang out wherever. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our trunk paneling back on. This guy right here. And that's it. All right, guys, so we're back to complete the uh, hatch glass mod. Um, we got up to the point of adding the uh, switch into uh, one of the blank positions on our dash here but sadly the switch did not work so since then i've sourced two additional switches one of which came off of a 
WD21. Uh, and the cool thing about this switch, unlike the other switch that I wanted to go with, this will be mounted vertically and it'll actually look like it belongs compared to the other one, which I'm about to show you now. Well, here I actually have two additional examples. These are uh, switches off of a Infinity QX4. These can be found on Infinity QX4s 1997 through 2000. I believe in 2001 is when Nissan made a change to the uh, switch location and relocated things to the driver's side door. The actual door panel somewhere in this region. Um, but the 90s uh, Infinity QX4s, these are the switches that they'll have. This was my initial thought. And this one, it illuminates, it has four wires on it. I made sure I took the um, connector this time because the last switch, all I took was the actual switch. I didn't think about the wiring. And, you know, it turned out to be a whole fiasco of trying to source harnesses. And, yeah, it was just a huge, huge, huge mess. But I think the uh, switch from our WD21 uh, will work best. We're going to go ahead and get to work on getting this uh, wired up. And then we'll test things out before we uh, tuck it away. All right, guys. So this is where we have to now put our thinking caps on and really pay attention and dial in on what it is that we're doing. So I wanted to stop and show you guys a few uh, differences in the wiring here. So the wiring in question on this switch, it is green. So this side of it has a red stripe that runs down the side of it and then this wire if i can get that in focus it's just a solid green but what's so odd about it is that both wires have these gray dots that are intermittently seen here on the uh, exterior of the wire but I came across a similar thing on the actuator that I pulled from the Infinity QX4. And if I'm not mistaken, the solid one is going to be your 12 volt side. This is going to be your positive. Make sure you pay attention to this because I'm assuming that if you wired this backwards, it'll probably burn up the switch. I don't know, and I'm not trying to find out, but I'm pretty sure bad things will happen. So just make sure that if you do decide to go with this particular switch when wiring it up, that you pay special close attention to that. All right, guys. So now we're getting more into things here. Here is my Adafuse connection with some uh, heat shrink tubing on the back end because I'm going to go ahead and secure things with that afterwards. And then... um Here's our wire, and here's our switch. So our switch is gonna go in here. As a matter of fact, we're gonna test fit it now. As a matter of fact, I haven't test fitted this yet. I'm assuming that it's gonna fit, but now's the moment of truth. Bam! Like a glove. Look at that. It's like it belongs. That is so awesome. So yeah, this definitely kicked things up a notch. Now I don't have to worry about having this inverted, you know, looking thing going on here. I don't have to worry about this anymore. For all intents and purposes of elevating the visual aesthetic, I think this is it. This is nice. Let's go ahead and get this wired up. All right, guys, so I just wanted to take a quick pause here just so I can show you guys that this actually works. Shouldn't try and get a proper place to perch you guys here. Let me just get our camera adjusted. So there's my fuse panel. This is gonna be uh, tapping into the 
interior light fuse. It's a 7.5. Never mind the red wire hanging there because this won't be like this by the time I'm done. But this is us touching the uh, the other side of this switch. And here's the switch. And I want you guys to listen. And there's our hatch glass opening. Let's go take a look. So as you can see on the back side of the truck, the uh, hatch glass is now open. And this was achieved by adding our actuator, some wire, um, a, uh, add a fuse, a couple of additional fuses from the junkyard, and just some free time. And you can have it too. All right guys, so now we're getting to the good parts. So we're gonna go ahead and get everything um, connected. I'm gonna put the switch where it should be-ish. Well, we'll unplug this for now because we're gonna have to fish it back through the blank space up here. We're gonna connect the other side of our wire here that runs to the back of the truck to our switch. So I'm just gonna kind of pull this down where you guys can see. Uh, we might have to cut off some. Let me see. Oh, no, it'll fit. So you wanna make sure you keep your wire down in there and then get this a good squeeze. And then to confirm and verify, you can give it a little tug and it should stay. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side of our switch. So I'm gonna push this up in. I'll hold everything together nice and tight. I'm trying to keep this in view for you guys. pliers on there and squeeze want this thing on there you don't want it to be loose because if it's loose you won't have a good connection and no switch action happening we're not going to put this in permanently yet I just want to route the wires accordingly I'm going to go ahead and plug the fuse in There we go. And then we'll push our switch. You guys ready? Yes. This time when I push it, I'm gonna have you guys facing the uh, hatch glass so you can see. So here's the switch. Here's my thumb. There's my hatch. Watch for it. Isn't that nice? I mean, it actuates just like it's supposed to. Let's do that a couple more times just to make sure it's not a fluke. <laughs> I'm sure we got it though. Yep. There we have it. Thanks again for stopping by the Camper Dan Files. My name is Chris. If you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, keep using your Pathfinder as a Pathfinder. On or off the pavement.